Regardless of which special operations career path you aspire to join, whether it's Navy SEALs, Green Berets, Army Rangers, or Combat Controllers, the process will be long and grueling. And to be successful, candidates must be in peak physical shape across the full spectrum of fitness. A big base of strength is required for carrying heavy loads. Muscle mass is a necessity for injury prevention to enable that strength. Muscular endurance is required to perform repeated bouts of exercise. And endurance is required to run and rock for miles. All too often, we see candidates who come to us for coaching, who crush the PST, APFT, or IFT with flying colors. They can jog a 12 minute two mile run and hit a 30 minute five mile run and easily hit 80 pushups and sit ups. But the problem is that they're 5'10 and weigh 150 pounds soaking wet. These candidates easily run 12 miles at a seven minute mile pace, but when they put on a 50 pound rucksack, they just self destruct. Their lower back, traps, and legs can't handle the additional load, or if they were to enlist and perform team events with unimaginable weight on their back, with heavy water cans in each hand, they wouldn't be able to perform and no one would want to be on their team. Now why do they excel in the running and endurance events, but they would perform so poorly in everything else? Well their absolute strength is too low to carry the weight on their back, and their grip strength is too poor to carry the cans. And at the end of the day, SFAS, BUDS, all of the above will exploit everyone's weaknesses. And because there's no entrance requirement for max strength prior to these courses, many candidates ignore it altogether. Those trainees are in for a rude awakening. In contrast to the weak candidate, the strong candidate trains the entire spectrum of fitness, including max strength. He's often not as fast as the 150 pound candidate mentioned earlier, but he still crushes his two mile run in under 12 minutes. And most importantly, he destroys log PT 12 mile rocks, excels carrying the water cans, and is the team favorite during group exercises. That's the candidate you want to be. Now, why does being stronger help with long rocks, carrying water cans, or log PT? It's because all of these activities are fixed weight. The rock, the can, and the log weigh the same for everyone. Being stronger makes those exercises easier because that candidate who's stronger has additional strength reserves. Let's illustrate this with an example. A candidate with a 185 pound max effort deadlift struggles to walk a single mile with 75 pounds on his back. What if we trained that same candidate in the deadlift for six months and he can now deadlift 365 pounds? If he were to put on that 75 pound rucksack, even if he didn't touch it for that entire six months, it would feel a lot lighter because of the increase in his strength. Makes sense, right? We recommend candidates hit the following minimum strength metrics prior to attending SFAS. Most trainees will hit these metrics within six months of dedicated strength training in the gym. Although if you're lighter or shorter, it might take a bit longer. These scores will ensure candidates max strength is high enough to handle the stresses of selection. So here's the minimum strength standards. We recommend candidates deadlift a minimum of 315 pounds prior to attending their selection course. We recommend they be able to complete a 100 pound dumbbell farmer carry, that's 100 pounds in each hand for at least 25 yards. Candidates should be able to back squat to full depth, 225 pounds. They should be able to press standing with a barbell, 135 pounds. For the flat bench press, our minimum strength standard is 165 pounds. Now those are the bare minimums we would recommend that candidates hit prior to shipping or leaving for selection. And our recommended strength standards are slightly higher, although we do recommend candidates shoot for higher than these as well. A solid deadlift would be 385 pounds or higher, and a solid 100 pound dumbbell farmer carry would be 100 pounds in each hand for 75 yards. A solid squat would be 315 pounds to depth or more. For standing overhead press, we recommend at least 145 pounds. And for the flat barbell bench press, we recommend at least 175 pounds. Now, all of the strength standards mentioned previously would put a candidate in a solid spot for their class. These standards are often hit within a candidate's first year of strength training, although some candidates might take longer to hit these numbers if they are lighter. Moving on to the Special Forces strength training routine, the foundation of any weightlifting routine for selection should be based on heavy exercises to build strength in movements that mimic the needs of that selection course. These include hip hinges, like conventional deadlifts, snatch grip deadlifts, all different kinds of variations of deadlifts. 
For the squat movement, that can be a back squat, a front squat, a split squat, a goblet squat. And for lunge variations, this includes barbell front rack lunges, dumbbell lunges, lunges with the barbell on your back walking. And for upper body movements, these include upper body pushes, like the standing overhead press, which is vertical over your head, the flat barbell bench press, dips, push-ups, incline presses, and the next variation would be upper body pulls. Horizontally, you can do the barbell row. For a vertical pull, you can do a weighted or a body weight pull up. We also recommend cable pull downs, cable rows, and face pulls. And here's a sample weightlifting program that you can perform to build muscle mass and strength. We recommend the candidates use good form and technique and focus on increasing the weight on the bar over time from session to session and week to week. On Mondays, you'll perform a lower workout, focusing on lower reps for your main movement, which will be a back squat. You'll follow that up with a barbell walking lunge for three sets of eight to 10 reps per leg. You'll follow that up with a hip hinge, the Romanian deadlift for three sets of eight to 12 reps. And then finally, if you're strong enough, you'll perform weighted pull-ups. If not, perform them body weight or a lat pull down for three sets of eight to 10 reps. Tuesday, you'll come back to the gym Again, for a focus on a heavier session with bench press for three sets of four to six reps, you'll follow that up with barbell rows for three sets of six to eight reps, and then another upper body heavy pushing movement, the weighted dip for two sets of eight to 10 reps. And then lastly, an exercise for general shoulder health and stability is the face pull, which will be performed for three sets of 12 to 20 reps. On Thursday, we'll repeat the lower upper cycle with different exercises this time. We'll start with a deadlift, a hip hinge for three sets of one to five reps. We'll follow it up with the front squat, which is a more upright variation of squats for three sets of five to eight. Next, you'll move on to a superset to hammer your legs, a superset of dumbbell split squats and a goblet squats for three sets of 15 each. And then you'll finish off the workout again with a vertical pull, either weighted pull-ups, body weight pull-ups or lat pull-downs. Friday, you'll start the workout off with an upper body vertical push, the standard overhead press for three sets of four to six reps. You'll move on to heavy dumbbell rows for three sets of eight to 10 reps. And then you'll move on to weighted push-ups for two sets of 12 to 20 reps. Push these as hard as you can. The stronger that you get at weighted push-ups, the easier the body weight variation will be for you. And then we'll move on to a lower back exercise, actually the back extension for three sets of 15 to 20 reps. And then we'll finish the week with the dumbbell farmer carry for three sets of 100 meters. This will really fry your grip. If you're looking for a program that's specialized tailored to your weaknesses, feel free to check out the link in the description for one-on-one -on -one coaching. We understand that it's impossible to create a one size fits all weightlifting, running or rucking program for everyone. And that's why we put all of our information out there for free. So if you're looking for something tailored, that is something we offer. And if not, feel free to check out all of the links in the description to our other free programs. Max strength is a requirement to be successful at Army Special Forces Assessment and Selection and all of the other courses in the military. To all who are preparing for selection, remember to strike an optimal balance across all of the modalities of training. That means you can't be ignoring strength endurance, hypertrophy, max strength, or aerobic capacity. You have to be good at all of them to be successful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.